Hello, I welcome all my viewers again to another video by readspro.com and today the topic is Inwits in India. To introduce myself again, I'm Gaurav Jain and I am an author of these two books here as well and you can always come to our channel and learn about REITs and INVITS both. If you are not familiar with, you can watch our past videos and see our website REITSpro.com but briefly they would help you to generate passive income by way of investing in infrastructure. Now this infrastructure has to be basically completed infrastructure. The assets could be something like roads, transmission assets like in uh, power transmission assets or cell towers etc and the uh, investment is made through SEBI regulated investment structures called INVITS which are infrastructure investment trusts and the, they also pass on the cash flows to the shareholders or the unit holders just like dividend companies pass on the dividend. However, if you are an existing or familiar investor in INVITS you would have come up with these interesting terms like public invits, private invits, listed invits or unlisted invits. Are you a retail investor? Are you, do you have a larger investment capacity or a smaller investment capacity? Are you an institutional player? All these things would have to be covered to understand what invit is suitable for you, investment is suitable for you and this is a summary for all these terms that you might come up with. In, in with respect to invits, so there are public invits, private invits, and there are uh, alternate investment funds, listed invits, unlisted invits, NCDs of invits, as well as equity of invits, and so on. Video, we'll cover all these aspects in this video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. There is a discussion group we have. It's a WhatsApp chat group on REITs and invits. It's in the description of this video itself, and you can join that. There is an older video on REITs versus INVITS which is already there so you can understand what REITs versus INVITS are. Today we are concentrating mainly on INVITS. First thing is that there are three basic divisions you can think of. One is a public INVIT, one is a private listed INVIT and the third is a private unlisted INVIT. So we'll start with the simplest and the most relevant for the retail investor which is the public INVITS. So, Public invits are those which are listed on both BSC and NSC and they are available for retail investment. If you see the timeline, draft regulations were there uh, in 2014 and the first issue of an invit was in May 2017. After that, there was the integrated invit issue in 2017 itself a month after the IRB issue and the uh, issue size has also been mentioned and 2021 was the PG invit. So currently when we talk about retail investment and invits these are the three invits that we can talk about and these 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 are open for for the general public to invest in. So the IRB invit 2017 integrate which happened in 2017 and the PG invit in 2021. So this is as on date in January 2023. The listed invits again I am giving a snapshot here so you can see what the BSC and NSC codes are, the issue size and what the main assets of the three invits are. The structure of an invit is something like this. So you have a structure where there is investors and they invest in units, the fund is there, it invests in equity or debt and the amount of uh, distributions flows upwards like this right up to the unit holders. That's what the structure of a public invit is. And there are project managers, o and is done, sponsors, trustees and so on. So the history of distribution is given here as well. We have the whole history of IRB invit presented here where this is the per unit distribution right from the time the IPO happened in 2017. And this is a investor presentation snapshot. A lot of information can be gathered from the investor presentations that are given out by the companies. Similarly, we have the integrated distribution history right up 
to now from 2017 onwards to now and all these are per unit distributions along with the snapshot of an investor distribution where some relevant records are given for your understanding the integrated uh, snapshot was there so uh, the outstanding units has been given which is and how do you calculate the market cap it's outstanding units by market price a simple calculation that we do uh, for stocks also then what is the record date so you need to see a x date and that will tell you whether you'll be able to get the distribution for that quarter so this is published quarterly and the nav which is the net asset value and we'll we'll make a video on these uh, market price navs and everything also later but broadly to understand the valuation is 135 per unit and the market price for example is 140 so that's what the presentation gives you as a snapshot the investor presentation they come out with the pg dist invit distribution history is like this so uh, from may 2021 to now these are the distributions that it has done all these all this data is available even on our website reitspro.com and a lot of this data the best source is the official websites of the invits or sebi websites if you really require a compilation of important links you can also mail us at this id and request you can put the subject as request for link file and we'll send you a file with all the links that could be useful to you for invits so uh coming back to dissecting invits now if you look at this chart here it starts with aif which are which are alternate investments investment funds which can invest in realty assets these are also sebi regulated and so are the other entities which are private and which unlisted and private and list, listed in which coming on to the public listed in which we just discussed so the difference is that it gets more and more compliant as we go right on the scale and there is greater operational flexibility as we go left on the scale so this is the entire gamut of invits that we have today not starting with aifs but these three so aifs is another uh, entity whereas invits would be in these three categories so if you look at how do you find this so i have given you a snapshot here so you go to the web sebi website and you can choose invit public issues and the final offer documents and you'll see these very invits which we've talked about right now the public invits which are available to retail public then there are private invits and they are not suitable for retail investor and they operate via pl private placements so again this is the list which i've again extracted from the sebi website and there are 12 records there invit private issues final placement memorandum all these are different different infrastructure assets now there is the third category the this the second category which we talk about is private listed invits so there are listed invits like indian private trust and uh, shram invit where if you see this is the share holding pattern this is the uh, share holding pattern in december uh, to, to 2022 the individuals are zero here uh, as far as uh, the the indian private trust is concerned and the right one is for pg invit so the pg invit has a 23% holding by individuals so this is what the difference is between a private listed invit and on the right a public invit which is right is the pg invit and left is indian infravit and if you see indian infravit is also uh, i'm just showing you the listing here so this is the listing on the bsc so again shram invit is another example i'm showing you here so this is again a listed uh, invit here and this is a snapshot of a document Uh, and stream invit invit again is listed like this and i'm showing sharing a bs nsc snapshot here now having covered the first uh, two on the right which is the public listed invits and private listed invits we come to the third one which is the private unlisted invits Th these are like the names just not listed on stock exchanges therefore they are not even for the general retail investor they came up as uh, an alternative to the private listed invits because private listed invits had their own uh, set of regulations and uh, sebi came 
up with this kind of a structure so that uh, in which are more flexible in their whole uh, process of uh, interaction with investors and disclosures and so on so the first privately unlisted invit was the gic irb and it was set up in 2020 february and in 2021 though sebi prescribed some changes and it's become a little less attractive a private unlisted invit uh, because the regulations have been become more stringent so it becomes more ineffective right now for people to take this kind of a route so watch this is the next part we here we try to solve some small small questions which may come up with respect to invits for example what is an invit equity what is an invit bond so both integrated and nhai have for example both equity as well as bonds now the structure of an invit is like this so you have the lenders as well as the unit holders in these two categories so this is a sponsor and others which could be institutional or retail both of these could hold equity and there could be bond holders so these are lenders and that's how the invit structure can get finances therefore you could have an invit having both these so india great trust for example has equity which is listed and uh, it has bonds also which are listed so again these uh, the whole distinction between this is also clarified in another video because nhi invit also came out with an ncd issue in october 22 the next what's this is that you could have an invit name is the same but it could be public or private both so you could have an invit with the same name and one is happens to be a public list, listed invit the other is a private invit for example the case of irb so you have the unlisted IRB GIC invit and the listed public invit as in this snapshot here and the next and the final one is the NMP so you can hear in terms of infrastructure a lot of times the term monetization on of infra by the GOI by the government of India so NMP stands for national monetization pipeline and it is a very big uh, vision of the government where lakhs and crores lakhs of crores of money would be monetized from these 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 various assets a, a older video covers a little of these aspects and you can also go to the niti aayog website and see this very uh, paper it's the national monetization pipeline so just to recap we've covered public invits three public invits we have already we have talked about private invits in this aifs or infrastructure funds which are a smaller version of invits though not invits then listed invits again we talked about unlisted invits and we talked about ncds and equity in invits covering the entire probably the terms that you would likely hear in respect to invits thank you so much thank you for the time thank you